Right now at 4.30, we want to bring in our law enforcement analyst and former head of the Rhode Island State Police, Stephen O'Donnell, to get his thoughts on everything that unfolded this morning. So thanks for joining us, Colonel. Thanks for having me. Uh, Commissioner Perry said today to our reporters in his 40-year career, he has never seen anything like this. Walk us through, you know, how uncommon or common is a situation like this? Well, the volatility of this and the weaponry on an urban street in the city of Providence is, is really unbelievable. So it's not common. Domestics are very, very common, and they're the, probably the, the most grave danger, if there's any danger for law enforcement, it's domestics because of volatility of victims and suspects. So it's, um, to me, it's amazing that nobody was injured, law enforcement, um, as well as anybody in the neighborhood. The weaponry they possessed, AK-47s, if they're automatic or semi-automatic, the distance they travel, and the power, it can travel a thousand yards. So if it can ricochet, it hits somebody. Um, to me, it's a, it's a classic example of police doing a really great job with the technology they provided. Uh, you know, Commissioner Perry, a moment ago, we heard him talking about that armored vehicle that bullets couldn't penetrate. Um, obviously, a lot more than just having a vehicle like that goes into uh, responding to a scene like this. What kind of training is involved for these, for these officers? Well, that, it's called the Lenko Bearcat, and it's really important that law enforcement has those type of vehicles. For this situation, it's for barricaded subjects, so it's a perfect scenario to bring it, and it's the reason they can get close so they can communicate with a suspect. And basically, in a hostage situation, they want to communicate and make sure that they do the best they can to talk that person out. If they didn't have something like that and they move close, the chance of them getting injured or killed are much greater. So that Bearcat, I'm told, sustained some, some fire which is a scary thought in the first place. Um, to me, using the, a Bearcat, using the robot, the robot for technology is great. The, um, the police, what I'm told, when the throw bot went in the building, which is a, it's, it's basically a video of watching what happened, and in real time, someone can tell the responders where to go, um, where the suspect is, the suspect's reloading, and with the amount of weaponry he had and the uh, magazine capacity, um, it, I think it's a miracle, but it's, uh, kudos to the police the way they responded. And Colonel, how important was it that police had the knowledge that he did have all of these weapons inside of his home, that, that they had that information from his son and his daughter? It's everything. Uh, policing uh, is based on intelligence, and intelligence, what I mean by that is the, the robot gave him intelligence but having intelligence from the victim is critical. In this particular case, the victim's family said he has this type of weaponry, so they were prepared to make a decision from there. I talked earlier about a month ago, we buried two police officers in New York City that has very similar circumstances that a domestic a victim did not tell the police there was a gun. In fact, told them there was no weapons, and that weapon was turned on two police officers and killed. So here, um, luckily, victims should speak up and tell law enforcement it's for their own safety as well as um, law enforcement safety. Colonel Stephen O'Donnell, our law enforcement analyst, we appreciate you joining us uh, live at 430 today to break down a, a really major story in our city. Thanks so much. Thank you.